Welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And today I'll briefly introduce you to the basic structure of a literature dissertation. And the reason I'm doing this is because I get quite a lot of queries from people on YouTube who want to know what's my take on how to begin writing or how to structure a dissertation. Now, I do understand that in Pakistan and India, most literature dissertations are written like social sciences dissertations. And I have no experience of directing a dissertation like that. All I can share is my understanding of how most of my students wrote their dissertations under my supervision and how I myself wrote my dissertation. And then towards then, maybe I'll point to some of the advantages of this style of writing a dissertation. So obviously it goes without saying that by the time you get to your dissertation writing phase, you've already done your research. You've gone through discussions with your supervisors and faculty members to kind of hone in on what is it that you want to write about. Uh, so it goes without saying that those processes need to be in place before you actually start writing a dissertation. Now, the way I taught my students how to write a dissertation and the way I wrote it was that the first and most important thing in dissertation is the introduction. Now, some people I've seen online would suggest to you that you write your introduction after you finish your dissertation. I think that is terribly bad advice. The introduction of your dissertation is actually what lays down for you what is it that you are going to accomplish in your dissertation, how you are going to accomplish that, so what is it that you're accomplishing is going to be your thesis. It is the argument that you are making, right? In this dissertation, I would like to suggest that the Muslim idea of national identity emerged long before the party politics of India. That was my thesis. That was the main point in my introduction. How you are going to do it is too prompt you will lay down out your theory using Homi Baba's concept on nationalism or, you know, John Broyley or so whosoever is written on nationalism, I will use these concepts to argue my point. Then another component of your introduction would be to discuss the theoretical points of view or the theoretical knowledges that you will bring to bear upon your idea or on your thesis. And so you explain your understanding of theory. And there are two reasons you want to do that. One, you want your committee and your readers to be absolutely clear what do you mean when you use a certain term and that, that you understand that term? And two, you are also trying to forestall any criticisms that might come in the future that, oh, you misread this and you misread this and you can point out, no, this is how I chose to read this. And then in your discussion, you can incorporate the opposing point of views to a theory what have others said about it? You can even add footnotes where you say, I am aware of these, these critiques of it. But for the purposes of my inquiry, I would use Homi Baba the way I've just explained. So the introduction will have your thesis. Why is it important to write about it? And then the theoretical knowledge is that you will bring to bear upon it. And then you will point out which era, which text, what kind of text would you be discussing and why, right? Always try to answer the why question. And then towards the end of your introduction, you will briefly touch upon each forthcoming chapter, right? In chapter one, 
using this, this, and this theory. I'll be discussing these two novels or these three collections of letters or this memoir. Chapter two, I'll be doing this. So you give your reader a hint towards the end of your introduction, what would be the structure of each of your chapter, chapters. So overall then, the introduction gives you the basic structuring of your dissertation. It gives you the main argument that you'll be making, your thesis. It explains the theoretical perspective that you'll be employing and it explains why, and it also explains that theory. And then towards the end of the introduction, it tells the reader what to expect in your chapters, right? So this is generally the structure or main components of an introduction for a literature dissertation. It should roughly be at least 30 to 35 pages because you're explaining most of your theory. So take your time, right? But make sure to write it first and write it carefully because so much of what you will do eventually in the dissertation depends on how you have theorized your concepts or explained them within the body of your introduction. Then we come to, you know, the chapters, you know. Usually for dissertations that I've directed, my students at the most write four chapters. Now they, these can be standalone chapters that build on each other, but have their individual discussions or they can be interconnected. You'll have to make that decision before you start writing your dissertation. Sometimes they are chronologically ordered, right? So for example, a student just recently finished her dissertation and it was kind of a historical overview of feminism in Pakistan. So naturally it had a certain chronological order, right? So the chapters were then organized accordingly. You could also have a conceptual organization, which you will point out in your introduction that I will point to the rise of feminism in Pakistan in three waves, right? So first wave, second wave, third wave, that's chronological, but conceptually I'll be focusing on the rise of French feminism and its adapt, adapt, adaptation. And then you will just be discussing, here is my understanding of French feminism. Here is my understanding of American feminism. So it could then be conceptual. But each chapter, in a way, is a self-contained entity, right? So it adds to your main argument, but it also has its own thesis, its own controlling idea. It could also have its own theoretical perspective which you might have introduced in the introduction, but which you can build on. And then it has an argument where you will bring out what others have written about the novel that you're discussing, just like writing a paper. And then what is your take on it within the larger context of your dissertation? Then towards the end of each chapter, give your reader you know, a cue, give them a clue. Okay, having concluded the discussion of the 19th century Indian novel, I will now move on to discussing the 20th century Indian Urdu novel. And my reasons are these, just briefly. And then when you go to the next chapter, you start it with your introduction of your new theme or idea within the dissertation, but with the knowledge that you have already previously discussed cert certain things that you can incorporate in the next chapter as well. So each chapter therefore builds on the previous, but can be a standalone chapter and should be able to be read by itself as a complete whole, right? And not absolutely as a complete whole because it will still be connected to other chapters, but by and large, it should have its own fully complete structure. And similarly, you move on to the next chapters until you finish the last chapter. And then you come to the conclusion. Now, conclusion doesn't need to be very long. It can be three or four pages. 
all you'd expect it to say in the conclusion is kind of rehearse what you have just discussed. What do you think is its significance? And with a hope that it will have an impact in the field, just kind of a brief summary of what you have just done, right? You be free to a bit poetic. I, in my books, mostly uh, I get a little poetic at the end because, you know, it's your dissertation. But that's all the conclusion is supposed to do. Just give the readers an overview of what you have just done and finished, right? So overall, to conclude briefly, uh, the introduction is one of the most important part of your dissertation. That is where you will introduce your thesis or your controlling idea. You'll introduce your theory. You'll introduce any other works that could be similar to yours and that you're building up on or challenging, right? And then towards the end of the introduction, you will give a breakdown of your chapters and how you will approach them. Then each chapter has its own central idea, its own controlling idea, its own thesis, maybe its own theoretical discussion, and then the discussion of the primary text. You could connect it. Of course, it will be implotted within the larger structure that you've explained in the book. But keep in mind that it's part of not the book. I hope it eventually becomes the book, but it's part of a dissertation. So overall, three or four chapters with an introduction and conclusion with a substantial and expansive introduction and a brief conclusion, and then three or four detailed, highly elaborated chapters. That is what constitutes a literature dissertation. Now, I had promised in the beginning to point out why it is beneficial to write a dissertation like this instead of writing a dissertation in social sciences where there is a literature review chapter and a chapter where you describe your framework or where you describe your methodology. The advantage of writing a dissertation the way I have just explained is that it's easier to convert it into a monograph. How many books have you read, you know, where the structure is, here is my methodology and here is my framework and here is my literature review. Most books have an introduction and then chapters, right? So if you write a dissertation in the style in which it was taught to me, taught to my students and the way I have tried to explain, it's easier to convert it into a publishable book and to revise it. You won't have to do too much juggling with the structure itself, right? You still have to expand it and revise it. So that's the biggest advantage of writing a dissertation like this. And also, you know, it reads well. It reads like a book. It flows well. So these are some of my ideas. I thought I should elaborate these. Uh, if you need any examples, I'll see if I can find uh, some good dissertations online and I'll post the links to the description. But in this internet age, if you just do a search on literature dissertations, chances are quite a lot of them will come up too. I hope this helps you in your future projects. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer those. And as always, I'm grateful for your support. And I will now see you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.